Paul Smalls is a, a fairly typical comprehensive school in Essex. Um, we've got 1,200 young people and just like any other school we've got an anti-bullying policy that we have to publish on our website and in that it's got all the information that hopefully a parent will need to know who to speak to, where to go. Our work around anti-bullying has been mainly about the fact that we accept that it happens. We do an anti-bullying survey every year so we ask the children what that bullying looks like because if we don't know what bullying is going on we don't know how to help them with it. Prevention of cyberbullying and prevention of bullying full stop is much better than, than anything else so for me it's what steps are in place when you give your child that phone for the first time. I think before they have it is the best time to have that conversation. Would you let a complete stranger in your child's bedroom? The answer is no you wouldn't. So why would you let them be in their child's bedroom on the phone? So for me, it's understanding that that phone is not something that should be secret. Once it's happened, it is about letting a child understand it's not their fault, that it's a dialogue, that it's not about blame, it's about cure, it's about stopping it happening for them, it's about supporting them, that you, know, you still love them. One of the biggest challenges that we have as parents and as teachers is that actually the young person feeling comfortable enough to tell us about it. And I think as a, as a parent, often the child will hold that back because they don't want their, their parent to, to think badly of them or to worry about them. Um, I think sometimes a mistake that can be made is that the parent then really reacts in a really big way, gets angry, wants their pound of flesh. And actually, if you spoke to the child, they just want it to go away. They don't want a big fuss, they want it to be dealt with quietly. And I think from, from a parent's point of view, listen to your child. And from a school's point of view, the parents should have the same expectation from the school. You know, that actually when they come in, we're going to take that seriously. However minor it may seem when we're dealing with 1,200 children, that actually we're going to stop, we're going to listen, we're going to, we're going to go and talk to anybody we need to talk to. And if, if a school doesn't do that, then the parent has a right to demand they do. For most of our young people, schools are good and happy and safe place to be. So we have to accept the fact that their lives are completely different to the life that I had around that sort of social interaction. This is our information for parents, so they can just go and print off, this is some advice about what to do. You can go to all sorts of organisations, you know, Internet Matters, etc. All of those anti-bullying alliance, all of those organisations have got advice readily available. Be, be willing to accept advice, you know, because it's a learning curve. There is no booklet for being a parent, and in the 21st century I think it's even more complicated.